let's get on to some listener questions. Uh, so the first question yeah. is from uh, some guy you might know quite well. He's been on the podcast a few times. He's an active member of the uh, Wrestling with Jonas Facebook community page. Uh, Mr. Kieran Reed. Um, he asks, book your dream match, uh, uh, dream card for WrestleMania with current WWE rosters. So um, I'll, go, I'll, go, uh, I'll go first on this one, if that's OK. My, my dream yeah. Mania card. So some of the matches we do know uh, that we really can't change at this stage. But we obviously know that Drew McIntyre is going to take on Brock Lesnar for the WWE Championship. Um, I think uh, Roman Reigns is going to take on the theme for the Universal Championship. I think it's leading towards Shayna Baszler versus Becky. I think it's leading towards Sasha Banks versus Bailey. But some matches that we don't know too much about. And I, I'm predicting that um, uh, this might not be a, a, you know, a, a very desirable match at this stage, but I think we could be seeing a, a raw tag team title defence. And I think Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy will defend their titles at Mania against Kevin Owens versus Samoa Joe. I think that could be quite interesting. I'd love to see... Uh, Jordan Devlin and Kushida go against one another on the Mania card for the Cruiserweight Championship. I think that would be an amazing match. Even as a kickoff match, I wouldn't mind. They've done Cruiserweight Championship matches on WrestleMania kickoffs before. Um, I'd love to see Devlin versus Kushida get their moments um, on April the 5th. I think Andrade versus Rey Mysterio um, for a Universal Championship match, but I think an added stipulation of hair versus mask. I'd like to see that. Um, and then on the other side, on, on the blue brand SmackDown, I'd like to see a fatal four-way match for the SmackDown Tag Team titles. Uh, the New Day versus Heavy Machinery versus the Usos versus Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode. And I'd love to see Heavy Machinery win the titles there. Um, I'd, I'd like to see the NXT Championship be defended at Mania as well. And I'd like to see, I mean, I've got it down here and he might not be the champion as we've just discussed, um, but I've got down here. I'd love to see a, a match between Adam Cole and Daniel Bryan for the NXT title. And they had that match on SmackDown back in October when everybody was stranded over in Saudi Arabia. Adam Cole possibly against Daniel Bryan or Johnny Gargano versus Daniel Bryan. Tommaso Ciampa versus Daniel Bryan. Anybody versus Daniel Bryan. I think that will be great. Um, it's been rumoured that AJ Styles might take on The Undertaker, so I'd like to see that. I've already mentioned that Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte versus Bianca Belair is kind of my prediction for the NXT Women's Championship at WrestleMania. Uh, looking at the Battle Royals, I think... Um, Keith Lee, I think he should be in there and I think Keith Lee might win the Andre the Giant uh, Battle Royal and uh, I've got three potential picks for the women's Battle Royal, I think uh, either Beth Phoenix, Nia Jax or maybe if Bianca Belair isn't in the three-way championship match for the NXT title, then I think Bianca Belair could win the women's Battle Royal, but uh, Kira's question, book your dream card for Mania then Ashley, uh, what have you got down? Uh, I've got when it's when it's a dream main card, I just literally just scrapped the whole main card and made my own. Oh Without, yeah, go for yeah. It. So so literally, uh, I've got Brock Lesnar versus Walter because there was there was rumours for the Rumble that Walter would be number two, and Walter's come out and saying his favourite wrestler in the whole world at the moment is Brock Lesnar. because yeah. he, he just literally likes how Brock has run himself as a, as a wrestler nowadays. Because he likes how he works a limited schedule, and he's literally doing it for a certain. He's doing it for a certain time of the year, and he's literally obviously he's working around his lifestyle as well. I've also got Seth Rollins versus Tyler Bate. Interesting, yeah, that would be an amazing match. Because <laughs> it, it's it's a match called at a meet and greet where Seth and Becky were at, and you had Mustache Mountain come out as well, and literally they kind of kind of set a little thing which you'd like to see this match further down the line so they like, kind of said yeah that, I would like to see it um, I've got the club this for, it's just formed of AJ Gallows and Anderson and Finn versus the Undisputed Era very good yeah um, I've got a few other matches I've got Becky versus Rhea in a, say a champion for championship match, and I've got a six women's tag team match between with Charlotte Bailey and Sasha versus Karuki Boys and Yer Shirai. Very good, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think what else have I got here. I've got uh, nothing. Really. Uh, I've got the Bros Weights versus the Revival versus DIY versus Imperium. Yeah. A, have, you got, have you got the fiend on your card, Ash? Yeah, I do. I have a fatal four. I was trying to think, I was trying to go through this and trying to think how the hell can I get him into a match? Well, if I'm building a dream match, that's so I've got a fatal four-way match with 
Reigns, Brian, The Fiend, and also Cassius Ono. That would be really awesome. Yeah, that would be a blowaway match, definitely. Awesome. Uh, any others you got down there to uh, answer Kieran's question of a fantasy card for WrestleMania? So I've got a lot of idea for the US title will have a ladder match. So you've got, I can see, Andrade versus Velveteen Dream versus Rey Mysterio versus Angel Garza versus Kevin Owens versus Cameron Grimes and Ilya Dragunov. That sounds pretty good. I'd watch that, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Um, then I've got, well, quite a hard hit match between two Scots will be Drew McIntyre and Joe Coffey. I know they would have had history when obviously when McIntyre took a brief stint off of them um, when he left WWE the first time round when he left there and went onto the indie scenes especially over in the UK especially in Glasgow because he yeah. has been a former RCW champion so they you can see kind of a little backstory that you could build around that very interesting very interesting um, anything else uh, that's it really there's a few other matches but nothing yeah. really not throw away kind of matches no uh, any thoughts on the on the battle rules on uh, kind of who might be in them or who might who might win yeah uh, I could definitely see both Keith Lee and Bianca both winning their respective win, uh, battle royals you, you can definitely see it so definitely yeah. the performance of Bianca had this year in the Rumble I can see her definitely them using that as good momentum to build into it. But the past two winners have been like, you've had Naomi win the first one, then you had Carmella win the second one. It's like, there's like two people you wouldn't have thought who would have won those battle royals, but these ones, like, you kind of like have an idea who they might go with, but it's like hard yeah. to say sometimes because they literally throw it out the window. It's like, yeah. the first Under the Giant one, you had Cesaro win it, then the second was Big Show. Third was as weird because you had Corbin win it. Literally, they gave him the slight push. The weirdest one has been when Bojo Roy won the fourth. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm like, still waiting for him to uh, do something with Mojo Wally that's remotely memorable following that victory a few years ago. But yeah, uh, yeah but um, like I say, besides the first one, the, the one where Cesaro won, I don't think the Andre the Giant Battle Royal has really been that great, to be honest with you. But uh, I, I quite enjoyed it when Matt Hardy won it in 2018. Ooh. Uh, that that was a good moment, and I think mm. uh, that that was uh, probably because I was there. But um, that yeah. was really good. Let's get on to Kieran's second question then. Uh, what what's your honest opinion on the botches uh, of uh, ref counts and the the punches in AEW? So uh, um, I, I, I'll, I'll go with mine first of all. I, I think that NXT have had their fair share of botches. To be honest with you, lately, I mean, certainly when you look at the punches or the lack of uh, contact that Rhea Ripley was making. Uh, when she was uh, you know, in the ring a couple of weeks ago. And this week, if you watch uh, Cameron Grimes in his match, some of his punches when his opponent was on the floor was not connecting at all. And that was that was really blatant. So I think NXT mm. could be just as guilty, to be honest with you. But one thing that AEW have proved, that they are listening to the fans. They are very receptive to feedback. And they, uh, you know, have not made many botches over recent weeks. But I certainly think, you know, with... Some of the botches they made last year with the, um, you know, what should have been a three count when it was a pack versus Trent Beretta, I think, um, off of the, mm. the Black Arrow and, and one or two others. Certainly the, the Dark Order angle where the, the punches weren't connecting to Dustin Runnels at all. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm guessing that with that feedback and the amount of backlash they got on social media, I'm guessing that they've, they've briefed their referees, maybe. And I think that things have got a little bit better. And I think you've seen more botches, um, similar to the punches anyway, on NXT than you have on AEW. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it did leave a bit of a funny taste in the mouth when you saw them botches that were kind of circulating in social media from AEW. Um, but, uh, you know, they are still a very young company, so mistakes will happen. Uh, but they are aware of when a mistake happens and they're willing to make improvements. But uh, I, I know, uh, Mr. Clements, that uh, you've gone on the record once or twice about some of these botches. Um, yeah. uh, uh, certainly about, you know, the, the tag ropes not being used properly in tag matches and about, uh, the, you know, the, the punches and the counts. But uh, give us your thoughts. Um, bring us right up to date on your thoughts on uh, the, the botches uh, for AEW. Um, with overall, with AEW, obviously, we're saying it's a learning company. You thought when you had the two high profiles, 
ones last year, especially with the pack ones. Literally, you've literally killed like it's literally when you've done that. It's literally you've killed that as a finisher. Now he can't use that as a finisher really. Yeah. Then the other one was literally, I think it was a tag match between Private Party and Santana and Ortiz, where someone missed the cue to actually pull the referee out. The referee just stopped going and looked around for someone who pulled him out with no one in sight. Yeah, I remember there's, that as well. There's been a few that I've noticed the past couple of weeks, which I brought up one last week they had in women's match with Britt Baker. It's literally with the couch going down. You can see Britt's shoulders not clearly down. And it's mm. like, it's like, you know, I had a debate argument, it's literally, oh, it's not that the things you need to learn, because of the high profile you can think of, was a similar one, was the Becky situation with Ronda last year at Mania, where yeah. it's obviously it played out, but obviously because WWE is trying to write that, so it's, it hurts the deep people who are in the match as well do that. It's not just down on the referee as well, it's down to the talent as well to make sure that these things don't happen. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, but, you know, as we both agree, they are a young company. They are taking feedback on board. They are listening to social media and, and making uh, mistake, uh, making corrections to their mistakes or certainly uh, not being afraid to take the feedback on board and move forward with it. So I've got to praise them for that. But, um, yeah, I think NXT better watch their back because I think that they're getting just as much backlash for, for some of their botches recently as well. But uh, final question in our uh, listeners' question segment, and it's from uh, Grizz. Uh, Grizz is our kind of top of the leaderboard for the two-minute Brain Buster quiz, at least for now, at least for now. But Grizz asks, uh, what dream match would you book if you had all the Saudi blood money, or the Saudi money in the world? Uh, no wrestler is off limit as long as they are alive uh, then he goes on to say the same question but in this universe we have the ability to raise the dead so kind of a two part question there if you had all the money in the world Ash uh, what dream matches would you book uh, for the for the living and uh, for the dearly departed uh, go, go, go ahead with your matches first of all so I've got three for a live I've got Pete Dunne versus Okada that would be uh, great Seth Rollins versus Will Ospreay and yep. Zack Sabre Jr. versus Cesaro. Pretty awesome. Yeah. Like that's, that. that. Those are my three matches that I could think off the top of my head that I would like to like to put under any sorts of stances. And what especially, about... Go on. Uh, especially with the Seth Rollins with Osprey, you had that kind of... Hint, that's the Twitter spat you had last year. Yeah. Because you've got kind of a little bit of like backstory to that. You could build a match around. Yeah, definitely. Um, and and for for the uh, for the for those no longer with us, um, and it, I, I mean, in my list, it involves um, maybe one person that's dead. Sometimes two people that's dead against maybe a live person. But uh, go ahead with your list for, for for the other other end of Grizz's question. So I'll, I'll, we spoke about this off air because I've got a controversial one. So I'll give the non-controversial one to start off with. So that's mm-hmm. already got that with two people alive. I've added one person to it. So it's Seth Rollins versus Will Ospreay versus Eddie Guerrero. Okay. So I could see that, because especially it's three people who, like, when they grow up, when they started off their career, they were throwing that light heavyweight, cruiserweight kind of mentality, like, type of wrestler. So I yeah. think you can have the three different kind of backgrounds in the cruiserweight division is when they came up. So it's a quite different kind of match where they can, I could see they possibly could all gel together. Yeah. And the other one that's controversial is a match between two probably of the best technical wrestlers. One is currently living, one is sadly no longer with us for specific reasonings. It's Zack Sabre Jr. versus Chris Benoit. That would be a pretty uh, decent match. Uh, two very technical ground-based wrestlers. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, if those two, you know, who, who would you, who would, who would be the, who would win? Who would win between uh, ZSJ and, and uh, Benoit? Because that would be a, an, an amazing match, really. I, I don't know. I'll just have them a, a 60 minute ultimate submission match. I think for the, literally, I'll just put, just go, here you go, here's 60 minutes. Here's 60 minutes. Blow, blow me away. And literally, I think I wouldn't be able to decide who would win that. Yeah. <laughs> that would be like an, an Iron Man match, I'm guessing. Yeah, ultimate submission, because that, it's a match that. It's a hidden gem that Benoit of Angle had in 2001 at Backlash. Yeah. It's, just, it's basically an Iron Man match, but it's only submissions. So it's basically the first, whoever gets the most submission falls wins, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any more matches you want to hit us with? 
that's the, uh, those are the only two matches that came to mind. And I can't think of anyone else really. Yeah. Anything really until if you give suggestions, I think yeah, that's possibly a good shout well, for it. Like, I've, I've got um, I've got four matches for for each of each part of Grizz's questions. So for for the living, um, I'd like to see Randy Orton versus Brock Lesnar. Now I know they fought SummerSlam Oof. four or five years ago. But I think um, I'd love to see those two kind of really mix it up. Uh, I mean, that's the one, if you remember, where uh, Brock Lesnar kind of cut Randy Orton open hard way with his uh, yeah. kind of elbow strike. Um, but I'd love to see those two go at it again. Uh, I really, really would. That would be a dream match for me. Also, another match involving Brock Lesnar, Brock Lesnar versus Keith Lee. We saw a glimpse of it at Royal Rumble. I think that to have a match between those two would be outstanding. I think Brock Lesnar would sell for Keith Lee as well. I think he would sell for him. Um this is one that a lot of people bring up time and time again, but Sting versus The Undertaker. I think, you know, if there's a, an ounce of possibility that either of them um, are kind of match fit and able, I think that that match will happen. Hopefully not on a Saudi Arabia card. If we're going to see it, let's see it on an American pay-per-view, possibly a mania. And then uh, Goldberg versus Matt Riddle. I think that with all the controversy, Matt Riddle is kind of uh, uh, throwing out there, especially towards people like Brock Lesnar, Goldberg. I'd love to see him face one of those and uh, a match between Goldberg and Matt Riddle sometime somewhere down the line before Goldberg uh, is uh, not uh, young enough to step through the rope, shall we say. I think that that match has got to happen. And then looking at kind of the, the matches, if I could uh, raise the dead, I'd love to see Eddie Guerrero go up against Angel Garza. I think those two are uh, very charismatic, um, amazing, infectious personalities, both incredible in the ring. I think they both kind of match each other uh, move for move. Um, but uh, that would be an outstanding match. Uh, Mr. Perfect, Kurt Hennig versus Dolph Ziggler. Uh, two wrestlers very, very similar to one another. Um, just thinking about kind of the sweet, the sweet drop kicks and uh, the, the bouncing all over the place. One another, both Dolph Ziggler is kind of like almost a, a mirror image replica of, of a Mr. Perfect. Uh, my controversial one is, is uh, two dearly departed uh, wrestlers, Dynamite Kid versus Chris Benoit. Uh, Chris Benoit grew up idolizing uh, Tom Billington, the Dynamite Kid, and uh, modeled his, his style on the Dynamite Kid, his wrestling style. Um, and so both wrestlers kind of, you know, side by side would look so similar in terms of their physique and their wrestling uh, ability. That would be a great match purely for the wrestling standpoint. Um, and then my final match would be uh, a current wrestler, John Moxley, going up against Raul D. Roddy Piper. I think those two would have an amazing brawl um, all over the place. And uh, yeah, I think Roddy Piper, John Moxley would have a, a brilliant match. And uh, yeah, let, let's have, let them have a, a fist fight, tape up their fists, let them go at it, um, let them brawl all over the arena. Um, but Roddy Piper versus John Moxley would, would be my uh, kind of top match there. But um, thanks for all of you listening to questions. Don't forget that we're going to be doing a listeners questions segment every single week on the Wrestling with Jonas podcast. I'll be promoting it uh, kind of in the run up to the weekend, but usually from about Thursday, Friday, sending you questions on social media through either at with Jonas underscore pod on Twitter. Uh, just search the uh, wrestling Facebook page, wrestling with Jonas, um, or on Instagram. You can send us a question if you want. Um, uh, just at wrestling with Jonas, um, or send us an email, wrestling with Jonas at gmail.com if you want to get in touch and send us a question for next week's show. 